Good morning, guys. This is my weekend video. Uh, please, before I forget, like my video if you like it at the end. Be sure and leave comments if you're seeing stuff that I don't mention here. And, you know, I really find that very liberating for myself so I can grow as a trader well, along with the rest of you guys, okay? So basically, we got a one hell of a star-studded week setting up here for the uh, uh, economic calendar. We are getting hit every single day by the Federal Reserve Chair uh, Board. Uh, talking, coming, giving speeches, talking down the economy, uh, uh, the growth in the economy. Uh, so, you know, it is going to be something this week. Uh, so, yeah, that's one of the main reasons I'm still leading, leading to think that we are going to break these critical supports uh, early on this week. Uh, so let's just keep a close eye on this and we'll see what happens here. But uh, so we got Monday, we got a couple speakers from the uh, Federal Reserve. Tuesday, we got... Uh, Core durable goods, uh, more. Uh, Bullard, Bullard will be peaking, speaking Tuesday. He's the most uh, hawkish on uh, on the economy. Uh, so, you know, that's that's something that a lot of people look. And we're getting a uh, 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 housing price index. We're getting a lot of the leading indicators on the housing prices and stuff. So, you know, if uh, these housing numbers don't come in as Actually, bad news is good news, believe it or not, because this is our most leading indicator for the uh, inflation. So uh, they're really wanting to see uh, these these housing numbers really come in here. OK, so, uh, you know, keep that in mind going forward here. Um, <clears throat> then we have retail inventories Wednesday, trade balance, you know, uh, pending home sales, uh, some more Fed. Crude oil is going to be coming out. Uh, uh, we got quarter on quarter. Uh, the estimated Q2. Uh, this is a re uh, uh, a revision. This uh, that's Q2. So this is the third report. So this would be a final. That's not a big deal. The 830 GDP on that one. That's the final. They're just going to be re revising the Q2. Okay. Uh, jobless claims there Thursday. And then we have, uh, 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 then we're going to be uh, retail, personal spending. It's going to give, give us a pretty good feel for what's going on on the, uh, 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 and the PCE. This is the most important indicator that the Fed uses to judge uh, interest rates that will be hitting Friday. So keep that in mind. Chicago PMI is going to be coming out Friday as well. Michigan's consumer reports. So we're getting the consumer data and PMI data and PCE data all Friday. So it's a really big uh, day Friday for uh, them uh, uh, for this week. So heads up on that. Other things of interest this week. We got uh, BlackBerry, Bed Bath & Beyond, CarMax, Rite Aid, Micron, Nike, and Carnival reporting this week. Okay, that done. So. Things that I'm looking at right here, guys. I know a lot of people were thinking we got that little relief Friday, Friday. And uh, based on, you know, we bounced off a very critical support Friday. And we could actually open up Monday. You know, there's a ch there's a chance of that. Personally, I think, uh, you know, we're probably, if we had opened higher, we're not going to open higher very much. Okay. I do think you're probably going to have China and uh, Europe doing catch up, playing catch up to the downside. Uh, initially tomorrow uh, Monday morning so keep that in mind that's probably going to keep a cap on any upside uh, movement and I just saw the economic data so that's you know that's not really good either so I'm going to start with the dollar index there is major turmoil going on in the uh, forex uh, uh, yeah and you cannot have forex moving like what it's doing right now and have a stable market okay so this is this horrible stuff uh, so basically what we've got here, we are at a range high of the trend, but ultimately our pivot is higher here on the dollar. So, you know, with what we're getting hit with this week, I could very easily see us coming up here to 22 highs this week here on the dollar. And the dollar is inversely correlated with the markets. So the dollar goes higher, the markets go lower. Okay. So this is one of my major things concerns going into the week earlier uh, the, the week ahead that we have not topped out on the dollar then secondly guys i'm going to start with spx here you see this primary trend we are currently on here this trend line that we got going on 
on this primary uptrend going into this market. We we came down to that. If you go down here on a uh, four hour, I guess. See, we came right below that trend line. Okay, and we're you know we're right we're right there again. Came into a double bottom here. Okay, really really important stuff here going on here. Uh, so we basically did complete our uh, wave five possibly potentially. You know, uh, it, it has a measured move right down here to the low double bottom. We bounced off that double bottom initially Friday, uh, so we could possibly have a bottom in there. So. But one thing you have to be very concerned about here, uh, I need to put a little bit longer time frame here so I can show you uh, 180, we'll do a six months. Okay, guys, every one of these rectangles represent the, the weeks in which we exceeded the, or enclosed be, or exceeded the market maker move uh, for the week. Okay, uh, these here closed back inside. All the white ones represented that we close outside the market maker moves. Okay. This is a very, very, very unhealthy situation. Okay. Uh, so basically what happens is as this pro persists going on, there's less and less liquidity into the market because all of a sudden the long-term traders and the market making participants in the option markets, they step to the side. Environments like this, if you're an option rider, you cannot trade because you we are breaking through uh, the probabilities. And they completely and totally play uh, uh, right uh, options based on probabilities. And when we, whenever we're coming in week after week after week, blowing through our probabilities, it's no longer in their best interest to even, even participate in this market. So what, what we're having, here, the issue we're having, this has gone on so long, We've got a lower high, and now we've got even less liquidity coming into this double bottom. Now, I'm not saying we're not going to bounce, okay? I'm just saying there's far, market conditions are far worse this time on this bounce because of this continued uh, price action, okay? So you have to be very careful on your assumptions we're going to bounce for, from here and head back up, and November is going to put it in a higher high. It can, it can happen. And I will trade it to the upside if I get the signal to do so. But after seeing the economic calendar, I have no desire to be trying, uh, you know, you know, any type of significant, uh, you know, longer term positioning. Okay. Okay. One uh, one last way to look at the SPX right here, guys. This line right right here represents the two hundred EMA. Okay. So. We, we, we managed to rally right right above it, okay? If you zoom right in there, okay? We managed to close just barely above that Friday. So we come in with any type of negative uh, print uh, tomorrow morning. That means we're gonna be right at, or you know, testing that 200 EMA right out of the gate tomorrow morning. So be aware of that situation. Uh, you know, that held we just tagged it. We didn't break below it. We have already broke below it as of Friday, but we did not break below it in June, but we did just now break below it Friday. Okay. And, you know, uh, you know, I've, I've been looking at the, I know it's early in the day. Uh, Germany's got a place for implied uh, open and it's, it's looking like we're going to open right about where we closed initially right here. So um, just keep this in mind, you know, uh, it, it, it could very easily, you know, fall apart very quickly here. So, you know, uh, you know, so be, be very quite aware of that. Okay. Uh, third takeaway here on the uh, SPX. Okay, guys. So what I've got going on here, you see, uh, back going into June, we came down here. Okay. We found a low. Okay. And, uh, uh, you see how our Ichimoku's looked at that point in time. Okay, well, the low here resembles more the pattern up here. Okay, this low up here. So I do want to float this out here. Okay, and so I do want to point that out. This is a basing, you know, this is more of a basing Ichimoku. This is a trending Ichimoku. So we're coming into this low and 
we really need to build out a sideway base before we think the markets are going to go back higher. Okay, in my opinion. So in my opinion, the risk reward is still not very good, at least for the first couple of days this week, until we build out a you know a stable base for us to uh, change this trend back to the upside. So I just want to keep that in the back of your mind as well. So you know, uh, you know, uh, so I just you know just be very careful here, okay? And I got two Ichimokus on here on my chart. Uh, this is your standard Ichimoku. Most everybody around the planet uses. The, but I do have a secondary Ichimoku. This is my momentum Ichimoku. And uh, this is something you guys might want to add whenever you're doing your study because it is, is quite helpful. I use the 5 and 13 as my uh, primary uh, uh, inputs. Okay. So, uh, you know, it. both of these are, you know, very, uh, very helpful in helping me decide my trading and stuff. So uh, I definitely want to keep this on uh, in, uh, for you guys to watch this. Okay, to start our week right here, guys, potential problems, which I personally foresee uh, developing this week and which have been playing out very well. I call this the, uh, the back, black hole of pain, okay? We're right in the center of our uh, fib arcs, okay? And what we have been doing routinely from chart to chart to chart for the past several weeks, okay, is once we break inside of this, we migrate all the way to the downside before it finds support, okay? So what I've got up here right now, XLF, okay? And so I'm not saying this is an absolute going, definitely going to happen, but in my opinion, this is a very dangerous situation to start the week, okay? So we do have a double bottom on this one as well, okay? Uh, so let's keep a clo really close eye. This is, a, this is a must watch for the week. So we lose this area and, and, you know, we could be capping down losing this area and we start losing $30. Look what happened here back whenever the COVID came out. This was the COVID breakdown when the COVID crisis came. So, you know, uh, we could very easily, I think we are going to at the very least be coming down to that 30 to this week. Okay. Uh, the next thing we've got to worry about here in, in spades, okay, guys? Uh, similar situation. We are in the black hole of pain for consumer discretionary, okay? We know Friday we're going to have some very critical economic data hitting consumer discretionary, okay? Uh, we have broken below. We close below this critical trend support line. So that suggests to me we're going to have early weakness in consumer discretionary to start our week, knowing it was a full possible uh, calendar here. I think early on this week, we're gonna be down here at the 137.90, okay? So be be aware of these scenarios, you know, going forward here, okay? Now I'm gonna start with the consumer discretionary, consumer discretionary, okay? Amazon, number one holding, big major holding in this. Guess what? Now I have to put extensions here over on the, uh, yeah, I'm gonna put 500 here so you guys can see. Okay, so basically what we got going on here, this here is your black hole of pain, okay? So we just started poking our head into that as of Friday. We broke a critical trend line Friday. So, you know, if the markets start showing some weakness in the discretionary space, Amazon's one of the number ones to be looking for to the short side, in my opinion. So definitely keep this one on watch. Uh, you know, we could be revisiting these June, uh, July lows in a heartbeat. Okay. So heads up on that. That's $10 lower, lower here on Amazon. So definitely keep that on watch here. You know, we do have a lot of uh, uh, trend line supports and everything here. So it's not going to just be, it's not likely to be a straight shot lower by no means. Uh, but, you know, this is a warning, okay? Then uh, going after that, then we have Tesla, number two holding in, in this index, okay? In the black hole of pain, okay? We're right here in the middle of the black hole of the pain here. So suggesting that, you know, hey, we might want to be trying to find some, some sort of support, you know, and we got these gaps below us. So here, here is where my primary arc, you know, is. And we do have a horizontal support area. So I'm I'm thinking we could very easily be seeing 260 this week, uh, potentially, uh, assuming things don't even get a lot worse than that. 
Because once we start breaking down from here, things can get really bad really quick. Okay. So, you know, uh, I definitely keep this one on watch going forward. And then also with all the housing data, we got Home Depot reporting this week. Well, guess what? This thing here is starting to migrate. Uh, I've got two different FIB arc patterns because the it's 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 breaking down. Okay, it's slowly but surely starting to break patterns, and it's creating a new pattern lower. Okay, and so we are also inside a black hole of pain here. Okay, a potential pain suggesting you see this pattern right here, suggesting that we could be coming down here to the uh, two fifty. Even 250 by the end of the week here on, uh, uh, you know, you know, potentially 250, maybe not by the end of the week, but I'm just saying 250 could be in the cards here in the not so distant future here on Home Depot. And that's also, uh, you know, uh, that's, yeah, yeah. So this, this right here, so the, there is a range here, okay? There is a trading range right here. 250 keeps you right inside of that, uh, uh, trading range too okay so you're really not looking for an outside move by any shot by a move down the 250 possibly this week on home depot so i didn't want to go through too many things uh i do want to go through vix vx i called this out in my morning brief video friday morning i nailed it i nailed it absolutely absolutely nailed it and uh so i'm going to go zoom in here so you guys can see this uh so uh so basically, what I got, what I called out, I saw us above twenty eight dollars uh, Friday morning, and uh, and I sat there and thought this thing that looks like it's ready to, to just explode. And I was calling a minimum thirty dollars, and then a possibility this trend line right here up to thirty one dollars. Well, guess what? We uh, go down here on the one hour real quick here, okay? And wouldn't you know it? We came right into that trend line, rejected. It was 30, uh, 31, 21 was marked the highs. And then they're right at the very end. We found a little bit of sl uh, selling pressure. But bottom line was I was looking for a move to this Fib arc right here. Okay. And, you know, that was right at 3050. Okay. So, uh, but I, I was, uh, I was strongly suggesting that we were probably going to go at least 30 here on uh, the VX Futures Friday. And one final takeaway on our VX futures. Okay, guys. For several weeks now, volatility really has not been starting to show its ugly head. Okay. And uh, they've been keeping volatility. You know, and even on this back, sell back down, volatility has not gotten out of control. Well, as of Friday, we are back into what we call backwardation. So basically, VX futures, because of time decay, in a natural state, the longer dated, with with long longer uh, date, dated, uh, will always be more expensive than the short dated. Okay, because of time decay. Okay, now fear is there is enough fear over the next twenty four days that the volatility of the short dated options have increased. Uh, traders are demanding more premium to write options at. Uh, at these, uh, at the current, uh, what's going on in the current market. So as of Friday, we, we do start, we are starting to see the ugly head of volatility starting to spike here. And what happens, what has, what happened last in June, when this first started happening, we started seeing the long end go up with it, but not, not quite as fast a pace. But whenever we did come back down, the volatility didn't come back off for quite some time. Okay. So just keep that in mind. We're pro we are probably entering a for a sustained period of higher volatility in the next coming weeks. That's what volatility is suggesting to us right here. So if we don't rebound immediately, I mean really quick here, I mean we we could see a volatility explosion in the next coming weeks. So just heads up on that. Okay. Thanks for watching my video and please share it with people that you know. And I'm on Gumby nine six six two C on uh twitter if you guys don't follow me please follow me on twitter and retweet my stuff thanks a lot